Hi, I'm Dominic from Emakina CE and I'm here to talk to you about SvelteKit and the dawn of serverless. So let's take a look at our agenda today. I'll first introduce myself a little bit, then introduce Svelte and let's look also at what's all the hype about SvelteKit. Why do we even need serverless? And then we'll jump into some examples. So first off, who am I? First of all, I'm a husband and father of three, a soon to be four. I'm dev lead at Emakina CE. Um, I have a background in robotics. I'm a web hobbyist turned professional and I'm a performance junkie. So to give you an example about what that means for me, uh, one of my projects that I'm worked, that, that I'm currently working at is uh, the is the Billa online shop and I reduced the JavaScript on load by 50%. So I would say that's a pretty good job performance wise. So let's jump right in. What is Svelte and why is it something that you need? Svelte is a component framework, so it's similar to React, uh, Angular and Vue, but there's a slight difference. It is a compiler. So the component uh, framework does most of its work in compile time and not in the browser. So that's why it doesn't need uh, the virtual DOM and it's truly reactive. So when one value changes, it sur surgically updates the DOM to represent that state. So there's no diffing uh, algorithm that's going on and slows down your site. One of the themes that you'll find when you try Svelte is that you write less code. What that means for you is that you decrease your bugs because the bugs increase with code linearly. It doesn't depend on the language. It doesn't depend on how experienced you are. I mean, a little bit, maybe, but it's linear. So when you write less code, you write less bugs. And one great uh, advantage of using Svelte is you have a huge ecosystem. It's all of JavaScript land. You can use pretty much any JavaScript library inside of Svelte without minimal configuration because it's very, very close to standard HTML, standard CSS and standard script. So let's take a look on what it looks like. So we see here an easy component syntax. You have your script at the top, you have your normal HTML in the middle, and you have your styles at the bottom. So I want to point out, for example, the export let name. It's how you export props. So it's really intuitive. You know the export syntax from JavaScript already and you can pass in props. Um, if you want to have a fallback, in this case dev jobs, you can do that and it will be overwritten if you pass name into props. Um, the line below, you have a reactive statement. It's what will automatically trigger uh, the DOM to be surgically updated and this expression runs every time one of its, its dependencies change. So whenever name changes, the special name will automatically update. So it's like the spreadsheet syntax, some would say. Um, one of the advantages that also comes with Svelte is you have stores, you have animations, you have two-way binding and you have scoped styles all baked into the framework because it's a compiler. It doesn't matter how huge the framework itself gets because whatever you will not use in your code will be thrown away at compile time. So you do not ship it to the client, which makes your site really, really fast. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, Svelte also um, works well with TypeScript and SAS and PostCSS, so there are a lot of pre-processing plugins already available. So 
why Svelte Kit? I mean, it sounds similar to Svelte and that's because it is powered by Svelte. But the difference is the Svelte itself, it's a component framework, but Svelte Kit is the application framework that builds on top of Svelte. So you get a lot of good things coming with Svelte Kit. You get server-side rendering, you can do single page applications, uh, you have seamless navigation when you uh, switch between pages and you have a lot of options that you can choose from. And there are a lot, there are five different adapters currently. You can do either one of the serverless platforms, you can, or you can run a simple node uh, server, or you can do a static site generation. So you also get as a great benefit, you get lightning fast developer experience because under the hood it uses Vite 2.0 or 2.x, I, I think it's still on 2.0. Um, and the advantage you get whenever you call a route, it just looks at the dependencies for the route. So you can have a thousand different routes, but when you develop, it will only compile those dependencies that you need for exactly that one route that you're currently calling and working on. So it's really, really fast. You don't have to compile ahead of time. And of course, you get code splitting for the routes and styles will also be generated for each route. So just, we, we just take a look at the basic project structure. You have your source folder. Inside of the source folder, you get a lib folder. This is where you, all your shared logic and shared components live in. And the nice thing is you can reference them. Um, it doesn't matter from where, just with a dollar lib shortcut. So you don't need to take care of uh, nesting and when you move something, all the nesting gets destroyed. And then you have the routes folder and it's just a file and folder based uh, layout. You can also use regex, you can use placeholders. So a lot of great things come packed with Svelte Kit. So how do I serverless? Or why do I even need to do serverless? with Svelte Kit. It's pretty easy. You just select your preferred platform. You can do Begin, Cloudflare, Netlify or Vercel or do any other of the adapters. But th those four are supported by the platform itself. Um, you auto deploy with Git as soon as you set it up and set up the, the configuration. Then you enjoy your fast web app and lean back and let your client be wowed by how fast it gets. So let's look at some examples that I prepared. So Svelte Kit originally stems uh, from a requirement that was needed by the New York Times Corona tracking app because one of the masterminds behind Svelte and Svelte Kit Rich Harris, he works at the New York Times and they kind of needed something bigger. They needed a full-blown application framework. So that's how it got started. Another thing that I built for one of our clients at our company is the Hardlower Shop CMS preview where because Svelte is so lightweight, um, it's easy to build on top of an existing full-blown website and just have that little surgical update of the DOM happening in the background. Also one of the projects that we did was Hardlauer Advent Calendar. I'm sorry that I can't show you that today. You'll have to wait for December for it to take a look at. Um, I also built a guitar, a guitar tuner where I played around uh, with uh, library that enables us in Svelte 
uh, in, in, in JavaScript and in the browser to have multitasking. So I kind of did the processing on its own thread, which was really nice to play around with and try out. And as a musician, it, I also could use it uh, in, in my daily routine as a musician. And I also built a recipe app uh, where all the ingredients can be managed. And then out of that ingredients, you build recipes and it automatically calculates you um, the, the stats for that recipe. So let's take a look at those examples that I just mentioned. So here you can see the Hartlauer shop and on the bottom right, there's this little and very small um, icon where you can say, okay, I want to add one of the components to the CMS preview and I want to fetch live data uh, the, the preview data from the CMS and replace whatever is there with the preview data. So right now I added it to the preview data, but the problem is currently there is no preview data available. It's the same as the live data, so nothing did change. So whenever I want to switch between preview and live view, I can just toggle this little toggle here and oh, it it does even change. There is one little space. You can see unsere top categorien is jumping around. So it takes no time. It's really, really fast. So this is just the look of the guitar tuner. I build it to look like uh, one of my physical guitar tuners that I had. And if you press the button, yeah, I have to reload. I'm sorry. If you press the button, it should tune if the microphone gets picked up. Probably not because I'm connected to the cable. And this is the recipe app where you have your recipes, you have uh, your ingredients. Those are connected to a Firebase store where you have all your data and if you look at the orange juice, for example, you have all the stuff there and whenever you click update, it automatically updates. So, thank you for listening. Um, it was lovely to be here. The Topic is hashtag done. Uh, thank you for your attention and have a nice day.